Silvia Dionisio was born on September 28, 1951, in Rome, Lazio, Italy. She is an actress, known for Ira Conti Fantastici Die Edgar Allan Poe, 1979, Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man, 1976, and Transplant of a Brain, 1970. She has been married to Roberto Mazzarella since 1983. They have one child. She was previously married to Ruggiero Diodato. Silvia Dionisio's film debut in 1965 in the film Darling of John Schlesinger, when she was only 14 years old. In 1970, Tonino Valeri offered him the first role in the film adaptation of the scandalous novel A Young Girl Named Julian by Melina Milani. A true ode to tribadism, this film is certainly the most resounding in Silvia's career. This same year, he will represent Italy at the Berlinale. These are my top 10 movies for Silvia Dionisio. At number 10. Riavanti Marsh. 1979. Five middle-aged men are recalled for a refresher course in the military barracks, where they had served as military service 20 years earlier. Alessio is a proletarian, a firm supporter of workers' rights and against capitalism. Giovanni Crippet is a Milanese industrialist who leads a monotonous life. Atello Cesarini is a debt-ridden peddler. Francesco Paterno is a nobleman from Palermo. Finally, there is Pietro Bianchi who, returning to the barracks site, hopes to find an ancient flame. Instead he meets a cheerful, exuberant and unscrupulous young girl who is probably the fruit of the relationship with her youthful love. At number 9. Long Live Robin Hood, 1971. Maddled, Helga Line, is a minor villainess in the 1971 swashbuckler film Long Live Robin Hood. It is also known as the Scalawag Bunch, an archer of fire. Maddled is the ex-lover of Sir Robert, Luis de Villa. Maddled is jealous of Robert's infatuation with maid Marion, Sylvia Dionisio, who he plans to marry. This plan is not solely because of her beauty, but also since marriage between Norman and Saxon would open many doors for Robert to begin taking over England. Sir Henry of Nottingham, who is the alter ego of Robin Hood, Giuliano Gemma, has other plans for Maid Marion. At number 8. Bloody Peril, 1976. Directed and written by Mario Cayano, a gang pulls a robbery, which goes seriously awry. In their eagerness to escape they start shooting and it turns into a bloodbath, after which they take hostages in their escape attempt. Soon the gang turns on one of its members and tries to kill him, but they fail, and it turns out to be the biggest mistake they ever made. At number 7. Il, Bull Peace, 1977. Back from seven years of hard work in the Persian Gulf, oil, and with a few million to spare, Guido repatriates to open a watch shop in Milan. But his friends had informed him well, Italy is no longer what it used to be. Guido is soon targeted by robbers, political extremists, and extortionists. He finds himself penniless and full of debt, and without a shop. He is almost determined to leave for the Persian Gulf, but the birth of a son will induce him to fight again not to give in to the violence. At number 6. Jet Set Swingers, 1970. After his Western triumphs, Valeri stepped out of the shadow of Sergio Leone with this distinctly Bergmanesque sexual melodrama. Dionisio is perfect in the title role, and this remains her best film, Valeri turns up along the way too. Just when the film hits a period of autopilot John Steiner turns up in the final reel for a climax that is quite unforgettable. A bit difficult to trace, but well worth the effort. At number 5. Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man, 1976. A team of professional thieves converges on a Roman bank in the middle of the business day, quietly sending signals to one another as they case the joint and prepare for an audacious robbery. Two rogue cops with feathered hair, looking like Italy's answer to Starsky and Hutch, have the drop on them. Rather than setting up a sting operation or calling for backup, the cops simply attach silencers to their pistols and blow the thieves away, no matter that they haven't yet committed a crime. So it goes with live like a cop, die like a man, an agreeably sinister 1976 Italian exploitation film that picks apart the buddy cop genre a full decade before it rose to prominence in Hollywood. At number 4. Tranquil Don di Campagna, 1980. In the middle of the fascist period, Alberto, a complex boy and considered by all to be ill with nerves, lives in the family country estate with the authoritarian father Guido, his mother Anna, his younger sister Alyssa, the aunt Floriana, cousin of Guido and ex operetta diva retired from the stage, the real owner of the country house under whose roof they all live, and the only one with money, and the maid Aida. 
Guido is a true despot, he cheats on his wife with prostitutes and sexually abuses Aida. He often knocks on the money with arrogance from Floriana who reproaches him for his bad management of the estate. Alberto has an incestuous relationship with his aunt Floriana and a stormy relationship with his father, from whom he tries in vain to escape. At number 3. Terror Express, 1979. Terror Express is a 1979 Italian crime film directed by Ferdinando Baldi and starring Silvia Dionisio. The screenplay was written by George Eastman. On an overnight train ride going out of the country, three unruly passengers decide to persecute the other travelers in the dining car. Among the potential victims is an upper-class prostitute named Julia who gets clients sent to her room by the conductor. At number 2. Murder Syndrome, 1981. Michael is a successful actor who is currently playing a killer in his new movie, he goes for a weekend visit with his girlfriend Deborah to his mother's house. Deborah has no idea what she is in for, and, to say the least, the creepy butler Oliver is only a glimpse of what is to come. Deborah has no idea about Michael's past, mainly the fact that as a boy Michael stabbed and killed his father. Michael has no real memory of the event and claims to have just simply blacked out. The rest of the crew for Michael's film decide to crash the party at the house, and soon Michael starts blacking out again, and wouldn't you know it with the blackouts, come even more dead bodies. At number 1. Waves of Lust, 1975. Giorgio, John Steiner, is a driven man who pursues his desires and wants with ruthless precision. He has made a fortune as an industrialist, where his hard-edged approach served him well. At home, he domineers over his beautiful wife Sylvia, Elizabeth Turner, with brutal levels of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. Now he has invited a young couple, Iram, Al Cliver, and Barbara, Sylvia Dionisio, to join himself and his wife aboard his yacht. With open minds and carefree intentions, Iram and Barbara set off on a weekend cruise with Giorgio and Sylvia. Soon enough, passions erupt and tensions rise as Sylvia becomes involved with Iram and Barbara. As Sylvia's situation becomes more clear to them, Iram and Barbara agree to help her get revenge on Giorgio. But Giorgio is so paranoid and out of control that won't be a simple task. Can Sylvia find an escape from her horrific lifestyle? Thanks as usual for your support. Thanks for watching this video. Please share, subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.